Trick liners bounce on two inch webbing like it's a trampoline at pretty high forces. We are going to find out how strong their little trampoline is on this episode of How Not to Trick Line. No way! What we have installed here is our 995 fifth sample. And we have a ratchet that we had to install upside down. Normally the handle is downward and it goes under, in this case, the bar or over in case you rig it in the park. And we're gonna test this good piece of, what is this? Surfer line. Surfer line. I don't know my, my surfer line webbings. Wow. Since I don't know how this wretch is going to break, the soft shackle is attached to the pin because this uh, loop is too long. Normally you can girth hitch a tree or girth hitch whatever. And this side is a good sewing loop that you can see is attached like that. So we don't know if this is gonna break, the webbing's gonna break, or the ratchet's gonna break. So Dylan is very, very excited about this test, so much so that he insists on standing right next to it. And since we don't put the plexiglass on top, because it could affect the quality of the filming that we do, he's just gonna hold it. I don't think that's safe. You should no. have less fingers. Because if you only lose the tips of your fingers, you can still trick line, right? I mean, yeah, as long as I have my pretty face. Yeah. Leave in the comments below how we can get great camera footage and be safe about this. But in the meantime, Olga and I are going to be in the kitchen while I push the button. Good luck, buddy. That's warm. Olga screamed. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is warm. So the webbing broke, shocker. Yeah, this was like it's this. It's wrinkly too, look, it's got wrinkles. Oh, it was where the bar was touching. Yeah, that's, that's what, what Dylan said. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. But look, but look how wrinkly it got. Like yeah. it has like permanent wrinkles. Yeah, it didn't have stretch that. marks. It's like after wow. being pregnant. It, cha it like changed the weaving like a lot. You can feel it, you can see it. 27.5 <gasps> kilonewtons. What? or 6,200 pounds of force. And oh, it's incredible. for fun, these guys play with 15 kilonewtons of tension or like their peak forces are when uh, they bounce. Yeah. So they have a two to one. I, would, I wouldn't call that a safety ratio. Nope. They just have a ratio of two to one. <laughs> okay, so this is the same setup now for our next sample, except this is a mild tear in it where you would hesitate to use it, but... Um, you might still do so. Would you guys uh, trick line on this? Yes. I would not. I would not trick line on this. You would not trick line no. on this? Mm -mm. Well, let's find out uh, who's more sketchy then. <laughs> All right. Wow. So, so. Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> Whoa, it did so many things. Oh yeah, you see that tar? Yeah, it did so many things right there. Wow. <laughs> what What is that? Whoa, <laughs> that, that tear didn't do any, I mean, look, the problem still is there for the most part. Yeah, this side, look at this side. So that's where the tear was. It definitely broke at the tear, but it didn't rip it just sideways. But it went all the way back. Look at the way this, this chunk is a result of the tear, not a result of the bar, correct? Who or, knows? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm I want to set up one without the bar just to see what it's going <laughs> to do. Hold on. It went higher! Yeah. It was higher. Oh my god. How 6, is it possible? 64 higher. So, little tears make your webbing stronger. stronger. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Trick line on, on ripped webbing, that's the best. Okay, sample 997 is a worse tear, and guess what we're about to do. Um, this should make it uh, above 40 kilonewtons based on our linear theory of it gets stronger. Uh, this is a three ton webbing, by the way, so to break above 6,000 pounds is breaking above MBS. Um, 
The, the weird thing is people are playing with one and a half tons. Um, it's just like the safety ratio is incredibly low. So interesting from a highlighting perspective. Let's pull. This didn't rip so um, so much long ways. This has more of a tear. Yeah, um, that's the first tear we got. Like that. Like that's kind of how I would expect it to go. Uh, but it's still wrinkled, you can see. Um, but here, where it crosses the bar, it's fine. So. What's the number? Our number is. <laughs> 26. So full strength, basically. All right, let's put a worse, uh, a worse one in there. Mm -hmm. All right, what do we got here? So we have gotten to the ter ter territory of not usable for a trick line anymore. I would not use this because there's obviously some strands that are separating from the slack line and it's eating into nearly a, at least a quarter of the slack line, so. Okay, let's find out if it's stronger. All right, wow, it broke, shocker. I am curious what, about this. What are the chances? That's insane. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty satisfying, sort of 23. 23, it's only like eight more dead Isaacs than you normally use. Wow. 5,000 still? So you would still be- Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, you'd have a safety ratio of 1.5. Now, I just had a thought that will that'll add another branch into your video is the cyclical loading. Obviously, I think is the is the is the determining factor and like why that took like five thousand pounds to bust that a tear like that. I would never trick line on that. I would never tr that would bust for me. Why why lines even break? Like if we never get to this like uh, under twenty kilonewtons, why do they actually break in real life? Some sort of cyclical loading reason because I know for a fact that I would bust that trick line. It might take a few sessions, but it, it would bust on me. And I never get even anywhere close to 5,000 pounds, so. Wow. Well, that's good to know you can't just take a yeah a slow pull test for, you know, the way it is. That's, I guess we'll have to do some human testing. We'll put you on some <laughs> shit webbing and you're just gonna have to. Yes. Well, we'll be nice. We'll do it over grass and not concrete. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's our next sample. What's going on? So if you guys can see those like hairy, strains or warp strains, which go along the whole trick line and they hold the force. They look like really hairy and like not strong, but this is what holds the force of a trick line. So, and we're missing the sideways strains that are called wefts. Weft, W-E-F-T, yeah. I believe. That's if yeah. um, Elmer Fudd say it said left. And yeah. that's what holds the weave together. Yeah, so it's like I can pull that, but this is supposed oh, to Oh, you can see those. Yeah, those like those. sideways ones. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so let's find out. Let's just find out what happens when we break this. What's the breaking strength of Ryan's ears when Olga screams on every oh. brake test? Oh my god! Just a few, oh a few god. more. Can Hold on. Hold on. Don't tell us the number yet. A few more brake tests and we have my new wig. <laughs> so, it broke. <laughs> I don't know. It, just, it did its thing. Imagine just lock line on this fluffy thing instead of like the, the hardcore this, you know? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, Is it safe to guess the number? Guess the number. Put in the comments below your guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. 26 points. <laughs> Two. Really? It's stronger than the last one. How? 5,900 pounds of force. No! Because all the fibers going yeah, this way were still there. Great. Like your fibers are wow. good. Okay, so now. All on fibers. No. <laughs> now we need to just cut. 25% with a knife and see what happens. Okay. We got to make good. this thing fail below, just below super good enough. <laughs> Let's cut some webbing. In case you're wondering why we skipped to 1001 as a sample, I broke the line scale two for number 1000. I cheated and moved the number ahead. That'll be, that's in a whole nother episode. It was 110 kilonewtons. It was pretty rad. 
These go up to 30 kilonewtons. They're awesome if you want them embedded in your slack lines and they go up to 30 kilonewtons. Is all about what these are breaking at. Anyways, um, so 1001 is where we're at. This sample, we're gonna cut this about 25%. Because we're cutting the warp um, fibers, not the we and the weave fibers, but it's the the ones that give it the strength is what we're cutting. I think that is going to cause a problem. Yep. Now, what it's going to do is tear this, but you still have one and a half inches of full strength webbing. So this actually might hold. That's kind of fun cutting this. <laughs> so that's about. One finger long, so that's scientific. <laughs> Finally, something that will actually impress you guys. That, that literally just tore, it ripped like a piece of paper. Oh my God. Well, that is what you guys trick line at. That's not that high. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 3,200 pounds of our, so 50% of MBS. Yeah, so you don't have to cut it halfway through to lose half your strength. I wonder if we just cut a little, if that would, if that would start the paper tear. Yeah. Just that? Maybe one more. Cause that's, that's a tiny one. Let's see, to measure the finger, let's do one more strand. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> it's bleeding. <laughs> okay. Um, let's let's pull that and see what happens. Okay, what's your mind saying right now? I still don't understand why us cutting it starts it so cleanly and it breaks at such a lower tension yeah. than when it's just a natural scuff and it tore almost what the there look at a little bit more than the other one there, it's, right? it's around what the other one was and we cut it so much less I, it is a little bit more yeah it is it's, it's a little bit more but it's it still like the discrepancy between those two tensions makes sense to me like it's a little bit more but not crazy enough. but i think like yeah. people should not be scared of the fuzziness because like this fuzziness just like comes from from this yeah and it's actually like maybe just we lost like one strain over here or something yeah and like this is just or we could tell people just to trick line on really nice webbing <laughs> and not take the risk yeah <laughs> nah we shouldn't conclude that nah. okay so we're going to cut even less to see if we can completely confuse everybody from fuzzy versus a knife one one and a half like that. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, man. I don't even see it. It's right here. So if this was a normal thing and you used it, yeah. it would look like, because yeah. there's two kilonewtons on it right now, it would look like some things you see. Yep. Like that. It's like one and a half. You want me to do another one? Or just like, no. you just it might be not even a full one, but I want to see what it. That's a full one. Do. We got one for sure. Oh, okay, let's, cool. let's just see what happens. Yeah. Twenty-seven point one, six thousand pounds of force. So yeah. basically, MBS. I think we just actually replicated what a typical scuff in a trick line looks like. It looks really bad because it's all frizzy and it looks like a mess, yeah. but it's actually only one or two strands, which seems like it's not as big of a reduction as I thought. I thought it was originally. So one or two strands is super good enough. If super you're cut enough. ten percent through, that's not. Yeah, super good enough. So we found what actually like what strains look like. They're like this. They're really pretty. And those are like the ones that go from side to side. But nothing's holding them in place anymore once yeah. the sides of those weave fibers yeah. we, go. We cut just the ends here that cinch everything together. And once those are cut and nothing's holding it, this is what's happening. That's really cool to undo that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty satisfying. That's what it looks like. And so you have those fibers are holding all the the weave together. 
But actually, this is the same slide. And how something is woven is how stretch is applied, and it's also how um, how they do after the treatments afterwards that also affect it. Um, we're going to have all that included in the trick lining textbook that Olga is working on. So check it out on slackline.com. You can trick line on fuzzy webbing if you have a death wish. Therefore, you shouldn't trick line. You should. You should. You, they, they think you should trick line. Uh, smash that like button. Cheers. And you can see paint, like it goes in and out. You can see the paint here. Yeah, so it's like, it's uh, in and out. And it's actually like really, really hairy like this.